This isn't a typical podcast. I'm not talking about a movie or even something movie-related in general, but focusing on a topic that I've thought about a lot recently. It even ties into the themes of this episode. Nicholas Meyer, the director of two of the best Star Trek films, in my opinion, The Wrath of Khan and The Undiscovered Country, said this, Sometimes the fans don't know what's right. That quote often resonates with me, and it kind of pertains to this topic, though in a more indirect way. No doubt you'll hear me using that quote more directly in another episode. Recently, there has been an ever-growing divide between the content creators, the people who own the franchises, things like that, and those who consume it. The one that comes to my mind immediately is Star Trek Discovery. It's extremely divisive. Is it really Trek? Would Roddenberry like it? Why do the Klingons look like Creature from the Black Lagoon rejects? Things like this. It got me wondering about a philosophical question all creators, be them YouTubers or filmmakers or writers or even painters, have to ask themselves. Who runs the show, the consumer or the creator? Let's keep this in simple terms. Let's not focus on huge conglomerates or corporations and instead smaller people. It just makes this easier to understand, or at least it does for me. I see a lot of YouTubers, on, like Markiplier, for example, who constantly make videos explaining how he works for, quote, you guys. He works for his audience. It's not just him, but... Loads of others as well. The only two big YouTubers I see that don't do this, that come to my mind, is PewDiePie, yes, him, and Red Letter Media. One just doesn't care and uploads every day what he generally wants to play, be it a small game or a large game. The other just literally doesn't give a fuck and doesn't care, even Mr. Plinkett. In all seriousness, People most likely will not like my stance on this constant battle between content creator versus their audience. My personal stance is that the content creator does not owe anything to their audience. Now that I've let that sink in, let me explain. As far as I am concerned, someone who makes a product, be it art or be it something like tires for a car design or a, an engine, does not owe anything to their consumers at all, except for what they originally promise. For example, if I say I'm going to make a movie and you donate 50 bucks and then I don't make the movie and don't hold up my end of the agreement, then yes, the creator has overstepped their bounds and should be penalized for it. I look at Mike Michaud and Doug Walker for their disastrous campaign for that dumb, stupid game show, Pop Quiz Hot Shots. That was just piss-poor management. If you buy a tire that says it will not flatten if a nail goes through it, but then it flattens as soon as it hits the road, yeah, you have the right to be pissed and the creator should be penalized. But this is because the creator has made a promise, made a profit from said promise, and then not delivered. This is different than going to the movies to see the next Batman movie and not liking it. If a content creator is known for making a certain kind of video, a ranting one, an angry one, uh, short skits, etc., etc., and then they switch to making vlogs or political commentaries and stuff like that, promoting a certain agenda, for example, and you don't like it? Tough. This has happened to me. I used to get 300 to 400 views per video. I know that's so little, but whatever, I don't really care. But I got bored doing what I was doing and took my channel's podcasts in a very different direction. I started this show to replace doing my reviews. The Godzilla vlogs I devoted just to Godzilla instead of just some other miscellaneous video. Yet my numbers have been cut in half because of this. Oh well, tough shit. People are constantly asking me to complete that stupid Godzilla Half Century War motion comic that I did several years ago, and I never will. I hate that comic and just about every Godzilla comic ever written. I owe you all nothing. And at the same token, you owe me nothing. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up, I promise. I make what I want and try to have one new podcast up per week, no matter what the topic the podcast is. Because I want to. Not because I'm obligated to. Not because I owe the audience anything. It's why my kaiju episodes always do significantly better in numbers than my regular episodes discussing a western or Star Trek or something even more trivial. But Adam, what about people who make their living off of the content online? 
Yes, it's right that I just do this as a hobby, but I do know a lot of people that make their living online just through YouTube. They still owe you nothing. You have a simple choice. Do you want to watch their stuff or not? If you say yes, then watch it. If you say no and don't like what you are listening to or watching, unsubscribe and don't watch it. It is literally that simple. My favorite YouTuber, his name is Lore Runner, makes his living off of Patreon. His donors pay X amount of dollars per month and he gives them access to things early and such. It's nice for his fans and it's nice for him, and I'm glad he's making a living off of what he blatantly used to call a hobby. I've literally followed him since his days of when he called his channel Arshi and Gaia. But I also hear him complaining a lot in his streams about how he owes his audience a certain topic. As an incentive to donate, the highest donor gets priority over what he ruminates on, what he reviews. That's not a bad idea, and I and I give him this. He, he always pulls through, and I admire him ridiculously for it, even if we are on total opposite ends of the spectrums. I always enjoy listening to his podcasts. But as I stated above, that's a promise, because someone donated based on that promise. The creator has to deliver. The same goes for employment, by the way. But in my opinion, for the general patrons... He still owes them nothing. As I see it, you are willingly donating your hard-earned money to the creator for him to continue to make products. Everyone does this now, even Red Letter Media. I think Patreon is a fantastic way to get around YouTube and their revenue problems, be it for genuine reasons or Google censoring people for talking about controversial things. You willingly donated that money. And the great thing is, you can stop donating. It's not an obligation. You don't like the certain direction, the channel, or the content that is being made of whatever you're subscribed to? Guess what? You can withdraw, unsubscribe, and not watch that content anymore. That is the best way for you to get back at them, or, or, or for you not to necessarily get back at them, but to just tell them that, hey, we don't like the direction of where this channel is going. But this is also a double-edged sword. If the creator's primary audience is of one topic, then you stop that and talk about something else, the creator has to accept the consequences. My audience likes kaijus. They like giant monsters destroying shit, as do all sane people, am I right? And I've built my small but loyal fan base off of that topic. I must expect and accept the fact that a lot of those people won't listen to me talking about The Great Silence or Rambo or something that doesn't feature a giant monster on the loose. I must accept that smaller gains and subscribers. But this is just a hobby for me. I'm, I make these podcasts because it's fun. I don't really care if my audience likes it or not. I do not expect anyone to listen to me, nor should my audience expect me to listen to them. It's a voluntary action between both parties. My kaiju fans won't probably listen to this episode, and that's okay. I also know to expect much smaller numbers for this episode as a whole. I see and accept the consequences of making this, but I'm still making it. If this was to become a job, which I honestly hope it never does, and my numbers keep getting smaller and smaller, I need to accept that. I need to buckle down and choose between if I want to make money or do I want to keep talking about what I love talking about. But this is the internet. Chances are, you lose one audience, you'll simply slowly, or in some cases instantly, gain another. And that's the beauty of not only the internet, but the free market in general. The creator rises and falls on yourself. Not always, but 90% of the time this is the case. Do they discuss or make a video they know will be popular? Or just make what they want? The audience rises and falls on themselves. Do they stay with the shift in content or after a creator makes a bad movie or product? Or do they leave? It's up to them. There is no giant hand forcing the audience or the creators to make or watch a certain thing. You can do as you wish. You rise and fall upon your decisions and your choices. Do I make that Godzilla video? Or do I make one on Battle of the Bulge? It's my choice. It's my decision. And I must live with the choice and know the consequences and accept them. That is the rule of the creator. The audience must live with their consequences too. Stay on board with something they don't like 
or pull out, unsubscribe, don't donate, things like this. It's entirely up to you. Now, this was a more philosophical episode, and it didn't really tackle a film or a creator, but this is what I originally wanted the show to be, and it just naturally turned into something film-related. Why? Because movies are fucking awesome. And most episodes will still remain to be film-related. But not all of them. Just thought I'd try this out. My simple philosophical stance on a certain product. And thought I'd throw this out there. Anyways, like any Productions on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. All links are in the description below. And in the end, this is Adam Noyce of AN Productions saying, Sayonara. Sayonara.